The GameCube and Wii are two of the best game consoles ever made, so it's only right that the Dolphin emulator, which emulates both consoles on PC, is one of the best emulators ever made. Our Ultimate Guide to Dolphin will show you how to get it up and running, get the best settings, configure controllers, tweak the graphics and really make Mario pop and more. Hi this is Phil from Make Tech Easier and this is the Ultimate Guide to Dolphin Emulator. The Dolphin emulator is among the most popular, if not the most popular, on the scene. This is because of an unprecedented level of accuracy, performance features and enhancement capabilities. What started as a humble GameCube emulator became the premier GameCube and Wii emulator before the latter system's console cycle was even finished. Dolphin is an open source cross-platform project which means it's available on all kinds of hardware. More recent versions only support 64-bit Windows, Mac OS X, Linux and Android operating systems. For the sake of simplicity, this guide will assume that you're using Windows 10, the most used desktop operating system at the time of writing. Much of the wisdom learned here can be applied to installation and configuration on other operating systems as well, and we even have an Ubuntu Linux installation link in the description. I'd still recommend following this guide though. The post-installation steps help you to learn more about the configuration, especially graphic settings. Install Dolphin Emulator on your PC. When installing Dolphin Emulator, you have two options, a stable version and a development version. Stable versions are released once every year or two, while development versions can be released multiple times within the same day. If you want to play it super safe, you can use the stable version, but I highly recommend simply using the latest development version and updating every one or two weeks. Issues don't arise very often in development versions, and when they do, they are very quickly fixed. Head to the Dolphin download page and select which version you want to install. Click Windows X64. Dolphin will download in a 7z archive which can be extracted either using 7zip or WinRAR. 7zip has some of the best performance out there and is free, so we highly recommend it. You'll need to decide where to place the archive. We recommend setting aside a folder especially for Dolphin and your games. For us this is a folder on the secondary hard drive named GameCube and Wii. Hit save, open up the folder where you place your Dolphin archive and extract it. Go inside the Dolphin X64 folder and click your Dolphin executable to launch it for the first time. You'll see that we have quite a collection of games on this machine, despite this being a new version of Dolphin for us. This is because, regardless of where you actually install your versions of Dolphin, all your configuration files will be kept in My Documents Dolphin Emulator. When using custom textures and saving configuration files, make sure that you place them there so they will be usable across your entire Dolphin installation. Add games to Dolphin Emulator. Start by selecting Config. Now click Paths. Click Add and add the folder or folders where you're storing your games. Note, acquiring games is your own responsibility. Do so by legally extracting them from a Wii console we are not liable if you choose other methods. That's enough said about that. In the main menu, click Refresh, and you should now see a list of all the games Dolphin found in that directory. If you don't see banners for some of your games, don't worry. Those will appear after you launch them, play them, and create a save file. Configure game by game settings. One of the problems with emulation is that even after all these years, it's not an exact science. Some games work better with one graphics backend, others with another one. Some games can be run at 60 frames per second with full anti-aliasing and others can't. This means that sometimes you'll have to tweak an individual game's config file so that your main settings get overridden for that one game. To change the settings for an individual game, right click it in the Dolphin main menu, click Properties, and then under the Game Config tab, click Edit Config. You'll be presented with a big blank notepad document where you can enter any overrides for any setting that you want. There's a full list of the settings you can enter on the Dolphin Wiki site, link in the description. Enter them by writing the heading in square brackets, followed by the any tweak as per the wiki page. So for example, to force time splitters future perfect to play on widescreen and on the, the DirectX 11 backend, it'd look like this. Once you've entered all the overrides you want, save and exit the notepad file. To remove your tweaks, simply come back to this file and delete whatever changes you made. Checking game compatibility. 
Before playing anything in Dolphin Emulator, you should check its compatibility. You can do this by searching for it on the Dolphin Wiki, or right-clicking a game's entry and selecting Wiki. The game's wiki page will provide you all the information you need to know on compatibility issues in Dolphin, as well as information and links to enhancements, widescreen codes and more. Use this information to ensure your settings are compatible with the games you're playing. Configure controllers in Dolphin Emulator. Dolphin Emulator is primarily for playing games, but before you can play any of those, you need to configure your controllers. Before we dive straight into configurations themselves, check if you have any of the following controllers on hand. An X input compatible controller, Xbox 360, Xbox One, many Logitech gamepads, etc. X input gamepads will be recognized by default but must be configured manually or with an any file. A PlayStation 3 or 4 controller. These can be recognized also as X input controllers using the SCP toolkit. A GameCube controller. Using the Wii U GameCube controller adapter or its Mayflash counterpart, Dolphin will be able to recognize your controller after some configuration. A Wii Remote. Using a Bluetooth adapter and the real Wiimote option on your settings, you can sync a real Wiimote. You'll need to get a wireless sensor bar alongside that though, or opt for the Mayflash Dolphin bar which doubles as a Bluetooth receiver for your Wiimote. So you'll need for the most part either the real thing or an X-Input compatible gamepad to have anything resembling an authentic experience with Dolphin. Without those, you'll need to use a mouse and keyboard setup, which I generally don't recommend for anyone outside of a few scenarios, like for Metroid Prime Trilogy, an FPS title. If you'd like help picking a gamepad, check out this article on the topic, link in the description. Fortunately for you, we're going to provide you with some ready-to-use profiles that will be immediately compatible with any X-Input enabled controller connected to your system. These profiles will support the following. A GameCube controller profile, a Wii Classic controller profile, a specialised Super Mario Galaxy 1 2 profile which maps all the functions to a normal X input gamepad. Most notable changes are the star bit pointer to the right analogue stick, shake slash skin to the X button and jump to the A button. There are a number of other profiles for you to download and use at your own volition but these should suit you for most of the games you'll be playing on Dolphin. We highly recommend investing in actual controllers and adapters to play it all though. Link in the description for the configuration pack. Installation instructions are included. Loading configuration files in Dolphin is fortunately pretty simple. First make sure the standard controller and emulated Wii remote are selected in their respective drop downs. On either of these all you need to do is click configure, select your X input gamepad under device and the profile of your choice under profile and click load to automatically apply all of our settings to your usage. You're welcome to tweak any of these as you like and either overwrite our provided profiles or create your own. Humbly speaking, we think ours are a pretty great place to start. A guide to Dolphin Emulator graphics settings. Open your graphics menu and let's just walk through all of the important settings. On the general tab, there are backend options. OpenGL, the most well supported backend, it should give good performance and provide minimal in game issues. DirectX 11, falls right behind OpenGL in terms of support and may provide better or worse performance depending on the game. Vulkan, which is labelled experimental for a reason, can provide great performance increases but also a lot more prone to glitches and errors than the other backends. Software renderer is very slow, doesn't offer enhancements and will try to play exactly like the Wii GameCube, only useful for developers, no reason to use this for playing. Full screen resolution can be set to either auto or your native resolution. We set ours to the latter for shadow play recordings, but if you aren't recording your Dolphin gameplay, you shouldn't need to worry about this. Aspect ratio is best left on auto since it may change depending on the game. B-Sync will reduce screen tearing at the cost of some performance. Enable if you can handle that, otherwise leave it alone if it causes lag spikes when you play a game. Using full screen will make your games automatically launch in full screen. You can use this if you like, but Alt plus Enter and the full screen button in Dolphin's main interface can do this for you as well. The other options are all pretty self-explanatory. We recommend enabling Show FPS while experimenting with settings and disabling it once you know what works for your system. And of course, leave the others alone unless you know what you're doing. Enhancements. Internal resolution corresponds to game resolution. 
we recommend starting at two times native as a baseline and moving up until you start seeing performance hitches. This will have the biggest effect on your frames per second. Anti-aliasing will reduce jaggies in an image, making it clearer and sharper. This is very performance intensive, however, so we advise leaving it off or adjusting it after you've found a comfortable resolution for your play. Anisotropic filtering is pretty much free visual fidelity on PC, set to 16 times or 8 times if that gives you performance problems. Post-processing effects will add post-processing to your images, uh, obviously. We don't personally care for this effect and it may impact performance slightly, but you're welcome to experiment with it if you like. The FXAA option is a lightweight way to add some anti-aliasing, for instance. As for the other enhancements, scaled EFB copy and per pixel lighting will ensure better visuals at little or no cost to performance or compatibility. Leave that enabled. Force texture filtering will boost visuals but can cause issues, especially in games like Mario Sunshine. Leave this disabled. Widescreen hack can give some great results, but in general you're better off applying game-specific widescreen codes instead. Leave this one disabled too. Disable fog may look nice, but it will break games that use it actively, like Silent Hill or Resident Evil, so perhaps best leave this alone. Stereoscopy really only applies to those using 3D monitors or virtual reality headsets. That's enough content for an article all on its own, so we're going to leave that alone for now. We'll maybe come back to it in another video. Hacks. Skip air B access from CPU can give performance gains, but damages compatibility and playability. Leave unchecked. Ignore format changes. Improves performance with minimal or no downsides. It may need to be disabled for a few games out there, but none that we've played. Story FB copies to texture only offers higher performance but lower accuracy. Most notably, things like save file screenshots won't work with this enabled. This setting is fine in most cases, but may need to be disabled on a per game basis. Texture cache is best left on fast with GPU texture decoding enabled for those with discrete GPUs. XFB is best left on disable unless a specific game requires it enabled. All other options under other will provide visual and performance improvements in all but a few titles. Advanced. As you would probably predict, most things here should be left alone unless you're a developer. However, enable load custom textures and prefetch custom textures if you'll be using them. Enable progressive scan is safe to enable, but it won't do anything in most cases. About other Dolphin emulator enhancements. Advanced enhancements allow using special codes and texture packs with your games in Dolphin to bring them to new heights. Unfortunately, the installation and configuration process will change depending on what game you're playing, but if you find these enhancements online tutorials will be included alongside them. The following is an example from our own machine. This is Super Mario Sunshine, upscaled to 1080p using a widescreen code, a 60fps code and an HD texture pack to make the visuals pop. We highly recommend watching this video full screen at 1080p, 60 frames a second for the full experience. This will actually look a lot better when played in game because the rendering and compression of this footage to allow it to appear on YouTube have somewhat compromised the visual fidelity of the footage, but this should still give you a strong idea of what can be done with Dolphin enhancements. There are definitely some more Dolphin emulator topics that we'd like to cover in more detail in the future, but this should be all you need to get started using Dolphin to play and enhance all your favourite Wii and GameCube titles. Comment below if you need any assistance with anything Dolphin related or tell us what you'll be playing with your emulator. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's it for now. See you next time.